All right, on the bench today, I have a Sony ICF SW7600G, and it has kind of an interesting problem. If I turn the unit on, it'll come on, it has sound. I can sometimes enter a station into it, and then if I just let it sit here for a moment, it'll shut off, and it goes back to the blinking clock. Now, if I turn this back on, it lost the station that it had and then it shut back off again. And the more I try this, the progressively faster it gets to shut off. Can't even get sound now. So I do have a bench power supply connected right here. I'm supplying six volts DC. It does require four AA batteries. So I do have six volts supplied to it. Now, the other interesting thing is that if I let it sit for just a moment and then turn it back on, it'll work fine for a few seconds. Just like that, and then it'll shut back off again like something is heating up and dropping out. So I've got part of a service manual printed out on it here, and I'm interested in checking the Micon 3 volts, and of course let's make sure that we have a good ground down here in respect to the power supply ground. All right, so I have my voltmeter connected. I'm going to put it on ohms, and I'm going to go all the way back to the power supply over here. And I see 0 0.8, 0 0.7 ohms, perfectly fine. And I do have my negative lead attached right here, and I get the same thing, 0.8 ohms. So let's go to volts. The first thing I'm interested in is pin 14 right here. Mic on, 3 volts. I want to see what is on pin 14 of this ribbon connector. So here's pin 16 down here. That should be ground. And we'll go back to ohms to verify. And I see 0 0.7, 0 0.8, perfectly fine. So there's pin 14. That should be 3.3 volts. Let's see what happens when I turn it on now. Turn the volume down a little bit. Oh, it already shut off. We'll turn it back on. It seems to shut off at about 1.3 volts. Well, let's find out where that comes from. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at pin 13, the six volt battery, just to make sure that we're getting six volts up to this board. There's 13, 6.068. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. And it's perfectly fine. It won't even start now. That's because the three volts is hovering at exactly 1.3 volts. I don't even have a clock now. Okay, well here is the regulator that supplies the three volts. It takes in a 5.6 volt supply from one of two sources, whether it be the external DC input or through the batteries, even if you have this plugged in. That's why there's two diodes here. So one is the battery connection and one is the external DC input. So it always has three volts to back up the microprocessor. So next I just have to find this on the circuit board and measure some voltages and see what's going on. Maybe we're missing the 5.6 volt input. Maybe this diode pack is bad. So right here is the diode pack D501. And then over here is IC503. It should be pretty easy to access. Okay, so here we are looking at the bottom of the circuit board. So first let's verify that we have zero volts on the negative. And we're at 0.8 ohms, perfect. And we'll look at the positive here and I've got 6.01 volts. There is the little diode. So this is the output side of the diode, 5.5 volts, absolutely perfect. Here is that regulator IC right here. It goes into the center pin. And at this point I have 0.96 volts on it. That's not good. This side should be ground and this side should be the three volt output. Once again, 0.96 volts. What is going on with this thing? Well, I went ahead and pulled the board out of it just to take a visual inspection. I do have one of my lights off right now to eliminate glare. So let me turn that back on. Check out what I see right there. Let's zoom in on it. Well, if you guessed battery corrosion, score yourself five bonus points. That trace right in the center of the screen, that does not look good right there. That is the output side of the diode. And if we follow it,
it ends up going down through this plate through right here. So let's flip the board over. And it's that plate through right there. It goes to the center pin on that three volt regulator. So I'm thinking I just need to either run a jumper wire through that hole or just run a jumper from this point right here over to this point right here. And we should be good. I definitely want to attack that and try to get the corrosion off of the board to prevent any future damage on the other side. You can actually see the corrosion in the center of the hole. I see a couple other ones, but those are all ground lands and there's a bunch of them that go around here. So even if one is compromised, I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, reassembled and ready for test. So pin 14, we have 3.004 volts. Let's turn the power on. 3.007, that's absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and enter a station. And it's working. So I'm gonna let it run for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the case and then I'll just let it play for a couple hours and make sure everything is good. Now, if you're working on one of these ICF SW 7600s, it does actually have a mechanical power switch up here in the upper right corner, but it has a solder pad to bypass that. So if you just go ahead and put a bridge across this pad, it'll always stay on. So that's kind of a hold switch when you slide the switch down it removes power from some of the key components in the unit to save battery draw okay solder pad is unbridged time for reassembly okay there it is all back together let's power the unit up main power on hit the power button and i get audio and i get fm I don't really have a very good antenna or very good signal in here. But it is working, back to AM. It's working perfect. I don't expect any more problems from this radio. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Sony ICF SW7600G. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill out of the recycle bin and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.